Previously on MasterChef, oh, on. the pressure test went into overtime with a battle royale in Las Vegas. This isn't just any Vegas restaurant. It's mine. To determine which of these four home cooks would be eliminated. It's still moving. It's that raw. She's burning buns again. Sorry, Chef. When Mom, Natasha the and reminder. Beth beat the odds, blue team won. Luca and Kathy went head to head. The stakes don't get any higher than this. To decide who would be cashing in their chips. For one of you, your Master Chef journey. I can't ends what it is. Here. Otherwise, going to spoil it. Tonight, the winning guess is the. Walking into the MasterChef kitchen today, I'm so relieved to be here. I did not leave my family and my son at home to just go home with nothing. I want to be in the culinary world, and I'm fighting for it. Welcome back from Vegas, everyone. Luca and Kathy went head to head in an epic battle on the Vegas Strip. And it was close, very close. But we had to send somebody home. So in a moment, either Luca or Kathy will walk through those doors. Kathy and I instantly, we were like best buddies. And it's going to be really hard if she leaves. Please, Moss, you welcome know, back. Uh, two minutes ahead. As Master Chef, Kathy did two days of training at Gordon's Lund restaurant before she was asked not to return. What? A la grande! Uh, <laughs> welcome back, and great to see you. It's nice to be back at home. What the fuck? This is a huge emotional blow for me. I'm definitely alone now. I don't have not one person that I can really talk to. I don't like these people, and they don't like me. It's time That's tough. for your next mystery box challenge. So bad. <laughs> As with every mystery box challenge, the contestants have to prepare, cook, and present one incredible dish using all or some of the ingredients inside the box. Now, the person who wins this mystery box will get a huge advantage. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Jesus. I don't know what to say, but whoever has a chance to go to smash. <laughs> In the upcoming elimination challenge, after which at least one of you will be going home. <laughs> On the count of three, lift your box. How did you find I'm that? from Texas, you know, I do a lot of barbecuing, and I'm hoping that it's a piece of meat that I could season up good, sear it, you know, make it real juicy. When I lift up that box, I hope that it's not something that's completely out of my comfort zone. I'm just a rustic Italian cook from South Philly. Like, I want to make pasta. One. Give us a turkey. Two. A turkey. I said turkey. Three. Lift. Woo! Which language is this? Is this Russian? Oh, what the? F oh, come on. What is that? What did you give us? What the? You fuck guys all is look that? a bit puzzled. And that's the idea. This is a bounty of ethnic ingredients from Russia, Spain, China, all around the globe. Usually, we tell you exactly what you have under your mystery box. Today, however, you'll have to work it out for yourselves. The, the secret the of a great chef is the ability to discover and conquer any available ingredient anywhere in the world and have the skill to make it taste delicious. So, take these exotic that blue foreign like a ingredients and make MRE, us one dude. delicious dish in 60 minutes. Your time starts. Jesus. Creepy things go over here. My strategy is to open everything, try everything. I think I'm going to use a lot of the elements here because I want to show off that I'm not scared Ooh, of these unknown that's... ingredients. Oh, man, oh. they're so bad. <laughs> oh, what? Nope, not happening. So, first one, elk. Kind of like venison, northern European. Um, Very lean. That's a godsend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some type of steak or something. I'm just trying to get an idea of what it is right now. You gotta pick your protein. I would also take a close look at this uh, mojama, which is Spanish salt cured tuna. Here we have Okinawa sweet salt potatoes. So obviously from Japan. 
It's a nice purple color inside. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a yam. It's super very, starchy. Very starchy. These oh. are the cod's liver. Very popular in Russian patties. Look at that. Man, that is gross. That is the most disgusting oh. thing I've ever seen in my life. Fuck it oh. out, man. Jesus. Is this ground moss? Yeah, Chinese ground moss, yeah. Mm. So it needs to be reconstituted, rehydrated, and it comes out like a texture of a noodle. Right? Wow. What is this? This is Chinese pubic hair. Yep. It's like a Halloween costume put in a bag. Put it on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> that's hair. That's that's a legitimate bag of hair. Well, Take you'd have salt. to be really hungry to eat this. <laughs> what would you make, Graham? Okay, I good. see a piece of protein right there. I'm going right after that. I'm doing elk, like pan-seared, mm -hmm. sliced thin, cube up, roast off some of the uh, Okinawan sweet potato. Seems like the obvious easy route, though, right? Absolutely. But I think if I can perfect that, I'm home free. 25 minutes gone. You've got 35 minutes to go. I've been on such a big stage playing in the NFL. I don't get nervous. When I'm cooking, I'm actually like calm and in my own zone. How you doing, boss? That's it's some good looking meat on the grill. Do you know what it is? I have no idea, but I know it's gaming because it don't have a lot of fat in it. So okay. you just That's a brain. I'm out there, try to make it thin. That's a good idea. That's smart. Yeah, and I got a puree. I know it tastes kind of like sweet potato, so I put a little cinnamon in there, a little cream. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Right, Jordan. Hey, Chef. The elk. What are you making? I'm gonna do kind of a stacked salad because all these flavors. There's some great bitter notes. There's some great sweet notes. I'm gonna mix in uh, baby eels. I'm assuming. So you're quite comfortable. Yeah, I'm feeling all right. You've got 20 minutes to go. All right. Oh, Sorry, Thanks, Chef. Some fucking what? Baby you know what are you making? I'm trying to do maybe like a surf and turf type thing. What is that? That, it's, it's some type of steak. It tastes delicious. I cooked it real quick. What's in the pan? Fuck what do you got going no. on? This is like some type of um, clams. Mm -hmm. This is like little baby eels or something. Okay. And I'm just see if I can make like a salad with this, and I'm hoping that the flavors come together. Good luck. Right, Lynn. So what have you gone for? I'm going to do kind of a taro root puree. A little sweet to a little bit of acidity for uh, my tartare. Tartar. Yes. Oh, no. So, uh, how are you going to spice that tartar up? A little bit of lemon zest, some herbs to kind of liven it up, make sure it's bright. I think lemon zest is the best way to go. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. So, based on everything we've seen, who's your money on? Jordan. He's in his comfort zone. Totally unfazed. Can identify 95% of all those ingredients. Bimmy's been able to identify most mm -hmm. of the resources and use that knowledge to construct yeah. a plate that I think will put him on top. I'm going straight for Eddie. I mean, he knows the meat. He's got it cooked. I think that that's going to be a yummy dish. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Ooh. 1, and stop. Hands in the air. Ooh, Ed, dude. Are they going to do Canada again? I'm going to skip it. 5, hands in the air. Well done. Wow. Throughout the Mystery Box Challenge, the judges taste elements of all the home cook's dishes as they come together. They now take one last look to choose the top three standouts, and the winner of this challenge will receive a major advantage in the next round. I look at my dish, and it looks awesome. It's probably the best looking dish I've played it so far. What? This is me on a plate, and this is what I do. Great job. The feminine dish, There bro. were three stunning, outstanding dishes that were beautifully conceptualized. The first dish we want to bring forward, all Eddie. the components were well seasoned, beautifully put together, and just the overall balance, absolutely spot Eddie. on. That dish belongs to... Eddie. Eddie. Yep. Nice, well done. Let's go. We're taking Eddie for sure. Finally, like, I'm in the top three. I've been working hard, you know, and putting out good dishes. It's paid off, and, you know, I'm happy. Wow. That's a scapegoat. That's easy to do. Everybody can cook a piece of meat. First of all, what do you think your dish is? I'm not sure about the, uh, the meat. I know it's very gamey. Well, let me tell you first what's on the plate, shall I? Please do. The puree is a purple Japanese sweet potato. And the protein? Elk flank. OK. Now, well, you didn't know? How did you cook the elk? Just a quick sear on that flat net, mm -hmm. looking for medium. And the greens? I fried them in a little olive oil, lemon zest, salt and pepper. That's delicious. The mm -hmm. balance is correct. The sear, 
And the elk, stunning. The puree is just smooth, delicate, and really well put together. Good job. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. OK. Yummy. That's yummy. The smartest thing in that was that lemon. Exactly. I mean, to cut through, there's cinnamon, there's some acidity, so it's not just heavy puree. Exactly. It, it lightens it up. The greens are delicious. Great strategic choices, and you pulled it off. Thank Good you job. very much. Thank you. Joe always looks. This dish may um, look simple, but it's actually very complex. Good job. Thank you very much. The second dish that we would like to examine further, it was extremely creative Lynn, sure. and beautifully presented. Step forward. Jordan or Lynn, sorry, Lynn. Lynn. Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, Jordan and Lynn are going in. All right. Beautiful. Thank so, you. So, you tell me what the dish is. Uh, it's a cold salad with like a black vermicelli base of noodles with sea grapes in it for the saltiness. And then there's, I'm guessing, maybe like a tuna jerky, some greens of sort, maybe a bok choy cousin or something. How about on top Was here? Is that a fucking uh, hair in there? Crisped up some uh, worms of sort. So they're baby eels. Oh, all right. What do you think this was, the bottom? Some sort of black vermicelli noodles. Actually, a Chinese black moss. Black moss? Tastes great. Really smart. Being able to utilize these things and put it together. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, chef. It's smart. You've got the balance right, the mm -hmm. seasoning. And then these chips, you know, to put that into a, a crisp and get it that tasty with that saltiness. He brought that in. Welcome to the top three. Great Thank job, you, chef. Thank you. Well Thank you. Good job. Good job. Really good job. The third and final dish that we want to taste. Not Beamy. Please step forward. Lynn. I love they baited with Lynn. Beamy. Beamy. Okay, Lynn's done. Okay. Lynn, whilst you visually put things beautifully on the plate, you need to season them. Damn. He knew Lynn that was going to get chosen. It's a beautiful plating. For a guy like you to get that kind of finesse, really impressive. Tell me about the dish. I was tasting everything, and I was trying to see what could work together. So when I seen steak, I seen the seafood, I started tasting that. And I could have ate that just by itself, because, you know, in Puerto Rico, we get the, the cans like that. We just eat them just like that. You know, surf and turf, courageous, beautiful plating. You were able to kind of hit on all the notes. Sweet, salty, tangy. It's like an orchestra playing a symphony all at the same time. This is a tour de force. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a fucking, it's a what? A tour de what? Delicious. Seasoned beautifully. The balance is incredible. And especially with that note of the oh, acidity the at the end, then. it's got that sort of gastric finish, which is tough I mean, to tower, pull off. Tower power, I don't tower think this is a fluke. I think you've nailed it. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, three stunning dishes. There can only be one winner. The person that cooked the best dish tonight will gain a huge advantage, unlike any other advantage we've given out in the history of this competition. Yeah, I got it. Congratulations. Eddie. Steady Eddie. Eddie. Well done. Yeah. Yeah, we're thinking Eddie. Yes! Now I get a chance to pick and choose the next move in the competition. Eddie, you ready? Yes, sir. Let's go. Well Let's done. Go. Incredible. I'm not losing my friendship. I had it right. Eddie is now in control Do of the, the elimination test, means where at least means one person power will of lead the competition. Welcome, Eddie. Bitch the ass. Pantry. But the one thing he can't control is the theme of the challenge. As always, that is in the hands of the judges. Today's Elimination Challenge focuses on a type of food that's very near and dear to my heart. Pasta with a okay. filling. The first pasta you have to choose from 
comes from the region of northwestern Italy, Piedmont. Agnolotti. There's a lot that could go wrong with this pasta. You have to be extremely careful that to get the amount of filling and thickness of the pasta just right. And this, I promise you, is very, very difficult. Your next choice is a pasta that's actually a favorite of mine. It has a really memorable shape and an abundance of filling. Mezzaluna. Mezzaluna. The what trick is, is getting that filling just right. It needs to be properly seasoned and perfectly cooked. What the fuck is any of this shit? Your final choice is a very special pasta, something that's served at festivals and very special occasions. It's known across Italy as the bonbon because of the shape and the texture. Caramelli pasta. Look at them. They're filled Both with tides. mozzarella and oh. served in a delicious tomato sauce. Wow. Look at that. Okay, that looks, that looks like a bus in it. Seeing as you won the mystery box challenge, your first advantage is that you will not have to cook in today's elimination Whew. challenge. Choose left then. <laughs> so, Eddie, which stuffed pasta will everybody out there have to make? I want to go with the most difficult dish. Smart. Smart. So, uh, I middle, choose. Middle. You sucker. Sucker. You went middle. Because Eddie right. won this mystery box challenge, he is safe from elimination. The theme of today's elimination challenge is stuffed or filled pasta. In the pantry, we gave Eddie three different kinds of stuffed pasta to choose from. Eddie chose... Middle. Agnolotti. To help you out, we're gonna give you a demonstration on how to make the perfect agnolotti. But rather than me show you, I've invited somebody else to show you how it's done. Someone who can still teach me a thing or two about pasta. Himself. In fact, it's someone who taught me everything I already know about pasta. Himself. Please turn around and welcome. Oh my God! What? What the fuck is this ad bullshit? To help you out, we're gonna give you a demonstration on how to make who the fucking, perfect Who the greatest fucking show, man? Please, turn around and welcome best-selling cookbook author and restaurateur... Cam Selfen. Mama. Your mama! Oh, my God! <laughs> it's at your mama. It's fucking your mama. It's Lydia Bastiana. She's like my culinary idol. Like, I worship her. I've been wanting to learn how to make Anilotti for years now, and to be taught by her. That's a that's really cool awesome. accent, though. You look amazing. Thank you. You'll see. Thank you, thank you. I have three sons here today. Yeah. <laughs> We're so excited okay. to have you. Everybody, this is Lydia Bastianich, one of the world's foremost experts on Italian You'll food. You'll see. She has like a weird like, Italian, super American accent. All oh, right. Yeah, Take a look. Ah, very nice. Ah. There's just one more. Very tiny twist. Eddie, you now have a third advantage. What? You will now get to decide Who? which two of your fellow Don't have a machine. will not get to witness Lydia's demonstration. No way. I'll kill you where you stand, Eddie. I immediately started thinking strategy, you know, try to think of everybody's weaknesses and their strengths. And I know that it has to be someone that is great competition and someone that I know would definitely Ready? struggle if they don't witness this. First person. I don't think they have a lot of pasta experience, but they are an extremely good cook. So first Jordan. person I would have to pick. Jordan. Would be James. James. Wow. We haven't seen him in like a, a month. Of a he views me as a serious threat, and he should. I'm not mad at him. He's playing the game, and he's playing the game smart. Wow. Well, my second choice, being around this person, I noticed that they ask a lot of questions, and they learn a lot of things by asking a lot of questions. So I'm going to have to say Lynn. 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 Oh. Yes. OK, OK. 
words. Okay, I'm not kidding. I think Lin in the entire show since the beginning. I think he's probably said 55, 60 words total. So screwed what at questions, this point. What is I've never about? made any loadies, so if I don't get to learn now, it's not gonna happen. James and Lynn, please, both of you, leave the kitchen and wait until this demonstration is over. Okay. What's well, edited? As for the rest of you, okay. make your way down. How excited are you? I'm like shaking. Let's do All it. right, guys. So. Where do we begin? We're gonna make just simple egg pasta. This is about a pound of flour. You make a well here. There's four whole eggs and five egg yolks. Put it in here, a little bit at a time. So the ratio of liquid is very important. You want the pasta to be smooth and buttery and soft. You continue the kneading. We do it by hand because that's the best way to do it. So from here, we let it rest, 20 minutes. I'm gonna kill Eddie. One chance to like actually see that yeah. in your life and it is taken from you. Yeah. Man. If I survive this, he is target number one from here on out. So we start with Bad the hand cranker on the lowest setting. You want to get it to this kind of consistency. It should be translucent, it has the right feel. The uh, agnolotti feeling is a, a very simple feeling of leftovers. Beef, salami, roasted chicken, veal, any kind of meat you have leftovers. You're making the filling, the texture is important. You can do a hand meat grinder. You don't want to put it in the food process because you don't want it to be pate or pasty. You begin one way, then you go the other way. So back and forth. And then right into the boiling water. Always put a lid on the pasta because it gets your boiling point right back up. Back and We're forth. making a grana sauce. We put it in here. You get a little bit of butter. Ready? Can you grate a little cheese here? Well, put that down. No, I'm going to put the sauce. Mm. Just enough sauce all around. Listen, young boy. And then the last, some grano padano. Agnolotti, a traditional, simple dish, but is not so easy to execute. Well, that's cute. Then. Okay, James, Lynn, please, back to your stations. Thank you. Is a dumpling? You have not 60 really. minutes to make us some delicious agnolotti that will make my mother proud. The dumpling are like, the like 60 steamed. minutes. Starts. Uh, now. Now. Me and Lynn are both in that same boat as we're gonna make angelotti and we have no idea what it looks like traditionally. I wanna put myself in this dish. I didn't grow up in Italy, like I grew up in San Diego where we eat enchiladas and California burritos. I wanna use what she taught us at a demo. I don't wanna copy it, so I'm thinking of the ingredients that I use at home. Bell peppers and jalapenos, and I wanna put my own twist on the pasta dish that Joe's mom showed us how to make today. Let's go, guys. And... He said What's the, the what? biggest mistake they can make at the beginning of this challenge? Well, beginning with the pasta is not working it enough. And then the rolling part. The rolling part is Today, very touchy. I will if it's this. very it's fine, then it breaks. Yeah. If it's too thick, then it gets too chewy. The success of this dish is a balance between the texture of the pasta, mm -hmm. the amount of the fillings, and yeah. then the amount of the sauce on top. I loved watching the demo. So I'm just gonna try to imitate that, but incorporate different meats. I'm gonna do some oxtail and some braised short rib. They're both really rich, so it should make a great filling. All right, Johnny, what's the plan? What do you got? I'm gonna try and make a uh, smoked maple syrup Alfredo sauce. A what? A what? Dude, Pretty maple just stop. syrup in Italian food is like sacrilegious. Do you use a lot of maple syrup in Italian cuisine? Uh, it, it doesn't actually, exist in Italian cuisine. In New England, it's actually very popular. Maple Alfredo is very popular where I'm from. All right, good luck. Thank you. Lynn, what's the filling? The filling is a charred leek and short rib. 90% of the fillings inside an andalotti are grind. When you blend and blitz, it goes pasty, sort of like baby food, and you destroy the textures. Look down here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight meat grinders, one blender, pure, and that's you. Are you going home tonight? All the flavors I know I can win this competition, but if I screw this up, I could be going home, and my heart is sinking to the floor, and I'm thinking, oh, gosh. It's not too late. It's not too late. Lynn, are you going home tonight? No, I'm not. Because you seem upside down right now. 
looks like Lynn is struggling pretty bad. To be able to knock him out right now would be a big advantage for me. So uh, I'm pretty happy right now with my decision. Howard. Joe, how you doing? You make a lot of pasta? I do not make a lot of pasta at all, actually. And, uh, uh, San Diego's not really known for their Italian foods. So what's the filling? Shredded braised chicken, um, bell guy, peppers, uh, and uh, I know seasoning. Know what do you think about putting bell peppers Mods, in the stuff? Mods, we've been this guy. I don't want to get spoiled. Yeah, it's yeah. I would um, taste that. Pay attention, you know, we talk a lot about textures and all of that. I will do so. What are you doing with the asparagus? Um, I'm, I'm not sure yet. Wow. All right, good luck, Howard. Thank you. Right, James, what are you cooking? I'm doing a ricotta, parmesan, angelotti that I am tossing in a ala vodka sauce. The tomato ala vodka sauce was miles away from Piedmont. Lydia didn't go anywhere near that. You think this tomato vodka sauce is going to blow her away? I think it's going to be unexpected. Tomato and I think vodka given is the fact not bad. That it's I didn't good. watch any type of instruction, it's going to be delicious and taste great. Good luck. Thank you. Chrissy, I bought Hi. you my mother. You're a hero. Hi. Hi, when you How smell you it, it, it there's a kick to it. Like a, oh, okay. If Jesus oh, like came a... down and stood next to Lydia, I'd be like, yeah, what's up, dude? Lydia, how are you? Where are all these animals? Oh, they're right here. There's a Swiss wow. chard and cheddar. It's good. It tastes very good. It really does. Thank you. There's just okay. under five minutes to go. Your pasta should be hitting the water very soon if it's not in already. Chrissy's looking very competent. James is looking very composed. Howard's looking very shaky. And Lynn is looking out of his depth. I think that Eddie might have dealt Lynn an ace that will take him out of the competition. My water's not boiling. Why hasn't Beth got a lid on top of her pasta to bring the water up to boil? If she's not boiling water at this point, she's dead. She's not boiling. Yeah, put some salt, Beth, whisk, Beth, put the fucking lid, lid on. Fuck it. Ah, all the pasta should be in the middle of a furious boil right now, and ready to come out. Boil. Beth, you got to put it in, or she's not going to have anything in the plate. Ninety seconds to go. I realize that that pasta can't cook in the time Something's I have left. So I just throw three annulati in the pan, get some butter going, a little pasta water, because you know it'll continue cooking. Let's go, guys. Heat the sauce. Keep everything hot. Come on, Beth. Let's go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, that looks good. And stop. Hands Woo. up. Yeah. That looks good. Right. Eddie, make your way down from the balcony. We're now going to taste each and every one of your dishes. And on the back of that, Ooh, at well, least up. one of you will be leaving tonight. Lydia, who should we taste first, please? James. James. Yeah, James, that's go, what please. I wanted to taste. Thank you. There's no way around it. That sucked, not being able to see that demonstration. What's in here? I did a annulati alla vodka. I had no idea what to do with the annulati. If you were not here, notwithstanding hey, that, the shape is fair. The ratio of stuffing to the pasta is good. The taste is, is good. I know you're at a disadvantage, James, but flavor is good. Thank you. She likes it. I think it's a good dish. I like the flavor of the sauce. The filling is really yummy. This tastes like you made it a lot. Good job. Thank you. I don't think I'm going to be the top one or top two in this, but I'm not going home. Who would you like up next? Lynn. Lynn. I look at my dish. She knows. I think this could be it. This could be your ticket home. Right. I mean, first of all, you're up against it. A, you didn't see the demo, and B, you're using a blender to puree the mix. I saw that pureed cat food in that mixer, and it was like, first thing I looked at was Eddie on the balcony thinking, smart move, because you were at your depth. What's in there? It's a short rib and ricotta filling, and the sauce is a charred leek brown butter with a little bit of the uh, braise. OK, I mean, it could be pretty tasty. 
under season again, and you've got a sort of awkward thickness to this pasta. You didn't see the demonstration, but it's laid out, one sheet, brought up and nipped together. You folded it and lifted it up because I've got a double layer of pasta, which makes it so inconsistent. Uh, how is this supposed to know, Eddie man? Play to his strengths in this one. He did. <laughs> Come on, dude. So you consider yourself a front runner in this competition? Not after this, no. You know, sometimes an advantage puts someone in a trouble spot, but it's very rarely someone can use an advantage for such an accurate and precise strike at a very vulnerable target as Eddie did okay, with Joe. you today. Sure. He hit you in the bullseye. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Eddie could have picked any of the 14 people, and I don't think it could have been as effective as picking me. I could be going home. Okay, tough times. It's okay. The judges are continuing to taste the dishes prepared by the home cooks in the stuffed pasta elimination test. Very rarely someone can use an advantage for such an accurate and precise strike. Eddie hit you in the bullseye. <laughs> Lydia, whose dish would you like to taste next? Johnny. I know they're gonna give me a hard time for using maple syrup in Italian food, but I think they're gonna like it. It's a butternut squash and ricotta agnolotti with a smoked maple alfredo sauce. So the butternut that's, squash that's has troll. its that's sweetness troll. with ricotta, and then the sauce is with the maple. And alfredo, it's a bechamel with, it's with uh, Grand Padano cheese. Maple syrup is not Italian at all. Yeah, no we shit. Don't have it in Italy, we don't make it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna taste and see how they work together. In my the mind, they them. don't work together. Mm. It's it's more of a dessert, you know? Maybe if you oh. put some cinnamon on top of it and some yeah, granulated weather. sugar, you Maple can weather, take it for not dessert. The tree only. As pasta, it just doesn't work. There's no harmony there. Jesse! Listen, listen. I'm so it's, it's a simple, it's a simple concept. Winter rolls around, okay? All the all the, all the juice in the tree freezes up. Then then la then later on, later on, uh, you put you, you put the tappies, you put the buckets, and then and then it it, it defreezes all, all the all the inside the juice, the tree, defreezes, waters down, bloop, flows into the bucket. Bloop, take the bucket. Take a Jesse, Boil it. Southern Belle, do no Maple wrong, syrup. Little Miss Manners. I'm not impressed by her cooking. Yeah. Let's so the filling, what's inside that, man? Oxtail and short rib with just a little bit of the chicken filling. Yum, yum. Oh my heckin' gosh, this test's great and has a crunchy Here's texture. The I mean, the pasta's been, master uh, the filling is seasoned Let's stunningly. And I think there's a target on your Phoenix back because everyone thinks yeah. you're in this competition because you look good. Um, you're in this competition right now because you cook good. Never forget that. And again, that has proved it. Great job. Thank you so much. Good job. Let's go to Chrissy. I made a Swiss chard and pancetta stuffed annulotti. The sauce here that you made? Uh, just simple, just simple butter sauce, and I put a little veal reduction over it. I want to keep it simple because I went a little non-traditional with the filling. Good. Good. Thank you. The the ratio of filling. What's that? The one? dough is is good. You get a nice mouthful of dough and just enough filling to kind of support it. And the simple sauce goes well with it. I've been watching you long enough. I should have. Uh, have you? <laughs> yeah. All right, good, good. Well, continued success. Oh, Thank you. OK, that's this cheating. This is like the ultimate validation for me. It's like I'm a viewer. I don't give Lydia, a shit. Whose dish would you like to taste next, please? Beth. Please. Beth, let's go. Thank you. I'm dreading having to present my dish because there are two scenarios. Worst case and worser case. It's ricotta Chat and diabetes. herbs and watercress and goat cheese. This is Debbie Ponsen. I like the idea of the herb filling and then of course the actual pasta being undercooked. That was sad to watch. I would hate to see you go home on this. I would hate to go home because I can't boil water. Right, but I mean, it, it could happen. I know. I uh, wouldn't be surprised at all if it did. Lost the water. Lost Howard? the heat. Heat water. All right. Walking up, I'm not 100% confident in the dish that I'm bringing up. 
The plating isn't that great, but hopefully the flavors come together. So what is exactly this stuff? Uh, bell pepper, jalapeno, braised chicken, and then it's spiced with a uh, little cumin. Yeah, cumin is a spice that Jesus. is not used a lot in Rice. pasta making or stuffing. She said, what? Yeah. What I got here is a mouthful of peppers. Okay. It's not <laughs> harmonious with a pasta dish like this. Classics work, and they're appreciated time after time. Otherwise, they wouldn't be called classics. Of course. Get a good connection the to the basics. Of don't just fly off on a wing, OK? I, I, I don't understand. She's been nice to you, but the whole thing with you is That's, you have this very cavalier attitude. Pepper don't know what you're cooking, what dish you're making with 10 minutes left. Then you come up here and get misty-eyed with us, like, oh, poor me again, I got screwed up, and I'm getting tired of it. Because if you were smart, you would duplicate a plate. The fact that you're not even thinking of playing this game properly is really annoying. I mean, I'm, I'm going to taste this. You want 15 of the same dishes up here? If you're here putting your spin on everything you make because you want to show us how cutesy and intelligent and crafty you are, well, that's going to get you a one-way ticket back to wherever you came from. And then you could show your friends and the six people who told you were good how cutesy and smart you are when you're home cooking at dinner parties while the rest of this group goes on and competes to become the next master chef. So Sheesh. I want pasta cooked properly Jesus. because you know what? Jesus. The only Bene. thing Bene. Bene. worse than a cook who can't boil is a narcissist in full denial. Thank you for nothing. Holy shit, dude. Ah, Joe's just a Okay, guys. Yeah, this is yeah, a competition about This solidifies it. Joe would never be a good streamer. Motherfucker got stun locked for the three Where? whole about minutes. About finesse, about creativity, oh, one about comment. copying Holy else shit. So you can win a quarter million dollars. Sheesh. If you're here putting your spin on everything you make because you want to show us how cutesy and intelligent mm -hmm. and crafty you are, well, that's going to get you a one-way ticket back to wherever you came from. Because you know what? That's... The only thing worse than a cook who can't boil is a narcissist in full denial. Thank you for nothing. Okay. Tonight, there are two standout and your lot of dishes that really impressed Lydia. The first dish, we actually expected perfection from that person, and they delivered. It had a perfect ratio of filling to dough, worked beautifully, seasoned perfectly. This person is becoming a front runner. Congratulations. Chrissy. Chrissy, yeah, I mean, it was obvious. Well done. Thank you. Aside from the birth of my child, this may be the happiest day of my life. <laughs> but the best dish of the night had incredibly delicious filling. The balance of textures worked perfectly. It was almost as good as her dish. Brie? And that dish belongs to... Jesse? Jesse? Jesse. Jesse, OK. Chrissy and Jesse, you are now team captains. Guys, we cannot have Luca. Luca just had three episodes all to his own. They, they can't coming. do it. They Challenge. Can't do it. I've been team captain twice. I've never been defeated as a team captain. This is awesome. What a great advantage. I'm a force to be reckoned with. So now the bad news. Usually, we only bring three people down. Today, there are four people that really disappointed me and my fellow judges. Please come down. Johnny. Fucking Maple Andy. Lynn. Lynn, yeah. And Howard. 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 And Beth. Beth, 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 yeah. Johnny and Beth, please step forward. Two dreadful dishes, underwhelming, Badly thought out and on the verge of an insult. On any other night in this competition, you both could be going home. But luckily for both of you, two other people were even worse. Both of you, back on your stations. If Howard stays and I go home, then I must have really screwed up my dish to make that happen. 
I'm like nervous and my hands are sweating. I love cooking, this is my passion. I'm just praying that I'm not gonna be the one that goes home. They both go home. Lynn, your dish was a total mess. The balance was incorrect. The texture was all wrong. The pasta was badly utilized. Quite frankly, your worst dish so far in this competition. Howard, you got this ignorance that you wouldn't absorb the kind of magic this Double. lady has spent nearly six decades creating. One of you has reached the end of the road. I would like that individual to leave this competition in a dignified manner. Just go. By removing his apron, placing on Len, his station, Len and leaving the Master Jeff kitchen. Let him do it, Len. Don't fucking do it. That individual knows who he is. Do the honorable thing. Don't! This fucker! Yeah! Shit, man. It's about time. What is he doing? Lynn's one of the top guys here. He's a better cook than I am, and he shows it with, with his plates. I got here, and I got an apron, and I got to compete. Yeah! No, no, no. Thousands and thousands of people did it. I did as best as he I could. He waited to see. It's definitely the hero. Guys, a bit like stop saying respect and, and, and dignity. Guys, no shot. He waited, he baited the, the possibility. No respect. No Thank respect. Thank you tonight. Good job. Thank you. And I feel amazing about it. Thank you, Howard. Thank you. Miles, I know. Can they end? My dreams about being in the culinary world are even more alive than they were before I got here. I'm leaving a better cook for sure. Miles, now?